Hello, in this video I'm going to give you some more explanation on how I created the sci-fi panels from one of my videos. So let's start in Houdini. I'm going to start out with a simple grid and we're going to go in there. I'm going to change any values for now and I'm going to immediately place a divide node. So in the divide node, we're going to use a setting called compute how and this creates these interesting shapes. And if I change the rows and columns of my grid, I can get some more bigger or smaller shapes. So that's quite interesting. Then I'm going to place an extrude. And with that extrusion, I'm mainly interested here in using a inset per uh, individual elements. So it will create a sort of like a border around each uh, polygon there. And if I then uh, use the group output, I can then also split that on that output. So one part is for simulation and the other part is for creating a metal border. So let's start with the border. Again, I'm going to use a extrusion. So we're going to extrude that surface into a more real 3D geometry. So we're going to use here the handle and extrude that surface. Now I want to make this probably a bit more interesting since it's quite flat. So I'm going to again use here some of the groups and I want to use the group to then procedurally uh, start extruding this. So I'm going to here give it the inset and also then using a group again. So I'm going to copy the notes and I'm going to use the same groups and I'm going to now start uh, using some extrusion here. So this will make the shape a bit more interesting. And we can then, for example, make them go to one point. So you can see that in some cases I have some small issues. And one way to fix this is just to placing a fuse node and merging points together. You could try to find some other settings and other ways to make this better, but just like fusing the points will fix this as well. Then let's clean up the geometry here on the side of it. And I'm also going to now uh, as create a box. Let's go to my top view here. Uh, and what I noticed here is that my grid, my rows and columns, if they are equal, my overall shape will be more symmetrical and more uh, angled in a better way. So now my box, if I would place it somewhere here in the middle, and if I would now stretch out the box here, we can now have a perfectly nice uh, following box here. So this is just again to add some detail, makes it a bit more interesting. Uh, you can model something else if you want to model other shapes. And then I'm going to just using a duplicate node and I'm going to copy this uh, along the surface. So for each sort of like row, I'm going to then copy one of those things here. So I'm going to just like tweak it a bit until it fits and then this is done and it can basically then be merged. Now the box itself is probably too big so I'm going to make sure it's a bit more shaped like my other uh, geometry here and then it is ready here for the merge so it looks like this. Now what I want to do here with my box as well is make it a bit more interesting in shape so maybe we can stretch out uh, a part of it, so maybe stretch the top piece here, so it's not a perfect square anymore. Uh, and then we also can play around with that bottom shape. Then here I'm going to boolean out the side, so all of my boxes are sticking out, so I'm going to extrude my original shape here. And I'm going to use it in a boolean, so I'm going to make sure that these boxes do not go out of the uh, bow main shape. So I'm going to here then say intersect and now I have a perfect uh, cut version of that. So now they are nicely, nicely following that shape as well. Now let's go to the next part then immediately and that is the simulation. So here I'm going to use some vellum nodes. So the first node that I'm going to use is actually a remeshing. So remeshing is needed to actually add some more geometry for the simulation to work with. So we need some geometry and so we can actually simulate and deform those surfaces. I'm also going to use a group node and pin the border. So we're going to make sure if we do a simulation, they sort of like pin or stick the border so it doesn't fly away. Then I'm going to use a normal and I'm going to set this to point normal. Later on, you will see why I did this. So but for now, I just added normals. Then I'm actually going to add a plot plus train node. And in here, I'm going to use some information like the border so they don't fly away. And I'm also going to do the rest length here a bit larger. 
Then I'm also going to use here the solver. This is where the actual calculation then will happen. And if I would press play now, we will see that there is some simulation and they're actually falling down. So that's something that I want to change. And I had this cool trick from Paul and we can use a wrangle in here and we can actually use our normal in the velocity. So I'm going to say to my velocity, which is V, that it's the same direction as my normal. So if I now place the animation, we can see that they're actually going upwards because my normal the, that we just added is facing upwards. I'm actually having to, I actually need to recalculate the normal. Uh, and I'm also going to do a volume post processing. Uh, this will make the uh, simulation a bit nicer. Uh, and this is then the result that I'm getting. So it's not perfect, but we can go in here and tweak some settings. Like, for example, we can add some small blur or a, a extra subdivision, as you could see here. This will make it a bit better. So you can see we have some nice shapes here. We can always go back to our system and start tweaking things. So we don't be afraid to go always go back and forward in these systems. We can also do some extra sub steps to make this a bit better. Uh, and we could also start changing things in the simulation, like switching to the other type here and actually having uh, some frames here. So as you could see, like it has some Im impact on how the simulation was done. Uh, we can also have more uh, topology if you want that. So it has more topology to work with. And you can see that this is then uh, the result of that simulation. So again, uh, we can go back and forward and play around with that. So here I'm actually increasing the rest length, which will make it more uh, bigger and also more wrangles. So play around with the value until you get something you like. Uh, now next up, I'm actually stashing uh, that simulation. The stash node will actually just stash it in the file. So if you want to stash it in another file, you can just use the caching system. I just sometimes just cache uh, as I go. And also here want to then uh, move this a bit upwards. Uh, and also we can just scale it down. So don't be afraid if it's going, if your simulation went too high, you can just scale it down afterwards since it's just geometry that we are working with. So this is then my panel with some cloth simulation and it's already looking pretty cool. We can always here go back and forward to our main grid and make this grid longer uh, having the rows and columns changed and so on. Next up here I'm going to bring in some meshes and I'm going to select here a few of these meshes to use. So this is a kit bash asset and I'm going to individually here separate them and I'm going to place them in the scene and also use some symmetry. So I'm going to just speed up this part since I'm just using meshes uh, from an artist which is called Sebastian. You can get these assets as well if you want to have the exact same one. Uh, but yeah, I just use this kit bash stuff to quickly get some more detail going on here. Feel free to just quickly load in some assets and, and place them on there. Like I'm mainly using the transform node and the symmetry node. So transforming is moving them around. And the symmetry is then to just having a more symmetrical look to this panel. And this is then the workflow of that. So then my panel is done. And I want to then now think about creating a high poly and a low poly. So the high poly, my first idea was to just place a voxel now. So, but the problem is the voxel won't work well with open geometry. So I was thinking like maybe if I just, for example, would like to do a symmetry that would close my geometry. Uh, but in this case, it doesn't work that well, as you could see here. Um, so I could try to fix this issue, but I only voxeled here the kit bash stuff. So, and that worked, worked way better. So make sure you have enough quality here. And now uh, let's think about the low poly. So I have some basic of my high poly and I want to create a low poly. So this geometry by itself is already pretty low poly. Uh, we can still reduce it more, but I'm going to mainly here reduce my uh, plot simulation. So here the poly reducing of the plot sim, let's bring it down uh, to like 15 or lower or to any number you want it to be. And then also here, I want to reduce that uh, voxelized uh, kit bash asset. So I'm going to make sure that we also have a low enough poly count here. So in this case, I have it reduced it by 5%. And so maybe give it a bit more in case you 
are missing too much shapes uh, and you can play around with settings like keep quads or keep original positions uh, so often you just play around with uh, values to see if they actually have a good impact on the geometry so this is then my low poly creation so it's very basic uh, low poly here now next up is adding a uv so let's place the auto uv here and what i often do is just try out different modes and i'm going to go here in the uv view check what they're doing uh, maybe play around with settings change the mode to something else uh, but in this case, I started to realize that maybe I want to do it another way. Uh, so a bit more, I would say, cleaner. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the UV projection on my original uh, clot sim. So I'm going to initialize that. And this is then actually a perfect unwrap for that piece. So I don't want to make that automatic. And I want to auto unwrap my uh, geometry here. I could also decide to do a projection here or some, use some other techniques but I decided just to keep it by auto unwrapping. Then I'm gonna also do the same for the other model, the kit bash model. I'm gonna just also use here the auto UVing and just the same process here. So I might go to the methods uh, and play around uh, with some of these sliders just to see what, what works the best uh, for that model. And I ended up just using the UV unwrap here and I'm just gonna combine all the models. So all the models have a certain UV data but I want them to be nicely packed. So I'm just going to use the UV layout and UV layout will automatically calculate uh, the position for that. So here is then the UV. I mean, it's not perfect, but it is usable uh, in this case, so it's a bit done quickly. And I can actually already export this. I use my own exporter, uh, but this just uses the FBX export that everyone has. It's nothing special. Then I can already start thinking about my high poly. So I'm gonna go to my metal uh, parts here and I'm just gonna use a bevel node. So the bevel node, as you can see here, will just uh, bevel these edges. We can bevel based on certain angles. Uh, I can play around with that and it will just do a nice job overall here to make it a bit uh, rounder. I notice that there is some issues in some areas that they're not nicely beveled since my input geometry is not super clean. Uh, and the way to fix this is I can actually just go back to my views and just increase that value until I get a better result. So again, like my input geometry is not perfect. I just fused the points together. Uh, there are of course probably some better ways you could approach this, but just fusing will work here. Uh, I can also just input my uh, vellum clot. It's a decent topology. And I can also then merge then my kit assets here, kit batch, kit batch assets. Now the last thing that I want to do here is actually adding a vertex color so we can actually use this uh, in our texturing software to quickly assign our materials. So I'm just going to assign a color here uh, and all my kit bash uh, assets actually want to assign multiple colors. Is copy the node here and then I can manu manually select uh, some pieces. So I'm just going to double click on certain areas to select the whole piece. And I might speed this part up since it's quite repetitive, just double clicking on geometry to select it in my green part. Once that is done, we can then also again thinking about exporting this. So I'm just going to copy paste my game exporter, change the name to high and then just click export. And this is ready then to bring in a texturing software. So in this case, I actually used Parmoset 2 by 4 you can just use whatever you want. I'm not going to go in too much detail since I don't spend too much time texturing this, but it's just a great software to just try it out uh, to see what you can create with it. So you can see that our ID mask here comes in very useful. So we can just drag and drop our materials. Uh, we can assign some basic values, some masks, some other things. And the cool thing about Marmoset is that it has real-time ray tracing very nicely integrated. So we can just uh, press Ctrl R and it will automatically toggle on or off and it will give us some cool panels here. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.